Kate and Tony sing this song, do da do da. Kate and corruption all day long, oh do da day. Phew, there's a lot that's happened while I was away. Uh, it might be easier if I just flip through X, and not only is it easier, it's actually a bit funnier. <laughs> so, if you haven't done so already, duck over to Microdot's new video. He talk, He has actually cut down part of his Fatal Error video into just the Jen McCabe part because uh, it is important and uh, I think he's going to probably make some more points on that in the coming weeks. So I want to start the news day with a mum juggling life post because she's always good for it. <laughs> She says, what I learned about Norfolk County this week. Number one, the trolls are very nervous and lashing out hardcore like rabid cornered Chloe's. I suspect that's in relation to Aidan Kearney going to court. I suspect that's in relation to Aidan Kearney going to court on Thursday. Number two, Tara Kerrigan continues to be next level. That's John's ex-girlfriend from 20 years ago who still hasn't let him go. Between her alt accounts, pearl clutching and incoherent arguments, she's in strict competition for biggest wackadoodle in this cast of characters. Number three, Norfolk County is putting on a play about the shooting at the OK Corral. Yuri is auditioning for Wyatt Earp. He didn't get the part because they are saving it for someone who investigates real crimes, <laughs> not rubber duckies. Rumour has it Aiden is in the running for the part since he's done more investigation than the MSP. Number four, Chris Albert won the biggest sissy of Canton award this week when word got out that he called MSP over rubber duckies. He no longer is sharing the title with the cowardly select board committee. Number five, Scuba Steve disconnected his phone number, but we still have so many questions. <laughs> it's pretty funny how they how we know that actually. So I'll get to that in a second. Number six, rumor has it the reason that all these troll accounts have the same talking points is because those are the ones that have been approved and set by Jen McCabe. But that's why we can't elaborate on any of that's why they can't elaborate. On any of the points. They are just repeating what they were told to repeat and can't intelligently discuss it. Touche. Number seven, raffle tickets are being sold to raise money for Karen. The prize is dinner with Karen and Lord Daddy himself, David Giannetti. Wish I was there, wish I could do it <laughs> and I'd be in. Number eight, a star drive-in held a craft fair over the weekend for Karen's defense and for Enrique's family over 5k for Karen's Defence Fund and 500 for Enrique's family. Tomorrow is Aiden's hearing, sorry number nine, tomorrow is Aiden's hearing which from my understanding will explain the troll meltdowns we've all been seeing. Turtle Boy is ready to <clears throat> bang bang. <laughs> and I always love the little um, attachments that she has with <laughs> with her rundowns for the week but it's pretty funny so um, um, Scuba Steve might have cancelled his phone to stop Deputy Manshark but is still his Jess Pano and is using it which we all worked out already um, hang on there was a there was a comment here that was worth do, 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 do. Number five, he really did disconnect his phone. Um, and mum says, well, yeah, Aiden tried to call him last night on his live show and <laughs> it's disconnected. So that's how we know that. So yeah, there's some pretty, pretty funny stuff going on there. Anyway, back to X. Okay, I thought this post was pretty funny. Someone named Glenn Jones writes, I am not scholarly enough to know whether Reed's lawyers have a strong appeal, but here are the 
high-level broad strokes of their argument to the SJC. My first question is, is it fair to say Reid was acquitted of two charges if no verdict was heard in court? Now, oh, that's who Glenn Jones is, <laughs> NBC10 Boston. <coughs> and the Glero replied, the answer to that is easy, sir. It's an ab it's absolutely fair because the judge never provided the opportunity for the acquittal to be heard in court. She slapped that mistrial down like she was winning a UNO tournament. <laughs> and of course Olivia's <laughs> reply was the best. Acquittals, Judge Bev be like slapping them down. <laughs> I thought that was pretty funny. Joey Bag of Donuts is quoting the report um, of the lady who was uh, indicted for felony witness intimidation for riding FKR on a duck and leaving it on a bench outside of Chris Albert's Chicken Pie on Charlie's. <laughs> and so he's quoting uh, Sergeant Buchanan, we're talking human to human here, lady. <laughs> Twain's Mellon is making a reply to Yellow Cottage Tales because of something that he, well, I posted something about that on the community wall, but I'll come back to that. We will come back to what he's talking about with 11 year olds. <clears throat> Aiden is reporting on Steve, the uh, deputy man shark profile, and different things going on with that. <laughs> okay, LV cops. And there was a couple people in the comments that were like, "No, no, the cops are telling one hundred percent truth. Karen's guilty." Hey, what? Uh, what evidence do you watch? Because we're both cops. For a long time, and I'm telling you, something ain't right. And I know there was a couple people in the comments. That something ain't right. And this spot on. Joe Flipperhead, who's always good for either a laugh or a good little music video, or making some very valid points. And in this particular case, he's making a, a terrific point. And everyone was permitted to discuss the circumstances. <clears throat> of the evening before going into the early morning hours with each other with no police there, correct? I sat with my family in shock and horror. Were you allowed to discuss the circumstances of the night before going into the early morning hours amongst yourselves without any police presence? Yes or no? There was no reason for us to be allowed or not allowed. We did not. We just sat there with our jaws gaping and said nothing. <laughs> Thing wrong. Did you understand my question? Did you get it? Yes, I understand your question. Can you answer it, yes or no? Were you allowed, that group of folks, mm -hmm. were you allowed to discuss the case without a police presence? Yes. Okay. It's like pulling freaking teeth. Um, <laughs> Deputy Manshark, everyone's noticing he's missing. Um, Brandy Churchill is reading Laurie Hellis's Children of Darkness book about the Daybell case. Um, Boston Confidential Podcast is saying, come on, the state police are charging people with littering. Get an Emma effing PR agency on speed dial for F's sake. When you're in a hole, stop digging. WTF, what an embarrassment to this state. Do they have no pride? Clearly they don't. <clears throat> so, um... With regards to the 11 year old comment just previously, this guy claims I'm trying to get the adoration of people who have the mental acuity of 11 year olds. What an insult to 25,000 plus loyal followers. I apologize in advance. And so that's the previous comment about 11 year olds because mm, I think actually I agree with the commenter that. Yellow Cottage Tales has the mental acuity of an 11-year-old. Like, to sit there and say that a 
pen is going to travel the same distance in velocity as a body if it was hit by a car. That's that's a that's even an eleven year old can tell you that that's not going to happen. Anyway, um, this person replies, "I want the brightest bulb in the tree." <laughs> can somebody explain how you find a dead cop missing a shoe with no jacket in snowy cold weather, looking all beat up on the front lawn of another cop's house? And when the police arrive on the scene, they never search the man's house. So. There's probably more to that, but you get the gist. <laughs> Mum Juggling Life says, Imagine going home to your wife and telling her that you called MSP because someone left duckies outside your pizza shop. <laughs> Embarrassing. Sorry, Julie, your husband is a biatch. <laughs> Shout out to everybody in Florida right now experiencing this. You can probably hear the rain on my roof, but you know what? What, what you can hear, that's not this. This is crazy. This is crazy. So, um, Bernie Church was in the middle of all of that right now. Um, of course, there was a, a dinner meeting after Turtle Boy's um, court hearing yesterday of all the usual grifters. <laughs> See my community post if you want more on that. Um, so, in response to Aiden's story regarding um, Tully and Fanning and their uh, interviewing this woman, interrogating this woman about the rubber ducky. <laughs> Chloe Albert, or Chloe in Vermont, says, My favourite part, Yuri getting boxed in by Yuri. Yuri, got to be careful around Yuri. <laughs> that guy is effing good. <laughs> and so the point was... <laughs> I feel intimidated by you showing up at my house with a gun and I guess the Greens Yuri three times and this is the defendant being interrogated all of this for putting down a duck instead of the Canton police coming the state police you clearly you testified in the case and Yuri says yeah and she says you're involved in the case he says yes I am she says, you come by my house about a little duck that was put down. Makes me feel intimidated. Yuri says, how am I intimidating you? She says, it's a duck. It's a duck. Yuri says, there must be two defendants here. <laughs> but how are you intimidated by a duck? Exactly. <laughs> I noted that as well. It was actually pretty funny. <laughs> These idiots really do live in their own world and they truly believe their own BS. It's just astonishing. <laughs> oh my goodness, it was so funny. <laughs> um, so as you probably already know, uh, Will decided to detour to Boston for Aiden's court hearing and of course spent the day with him and had dinner with him. Auntie Bev Sidebar and Grill wants to know, is anyone live tweeting from court today? That would be for Aiden's court hearing yesterday. I'm guessing Grunt will be there because LG. But only if someone donates enough gas, dunks and weed money for him to show up. <laughs> Ain't that the truth? Not Haley says, the fake victim arrived early in advance of today's hearing at Norfolk Superior Court in Denham where she in Dedham where she can be seen reviewing documents in the library while waiting to head over to the courthouse for the hearing that's just about to get started. Today should be momentous and it absolutely was. Gabagoo says she's reading court for dummies online version. <laughs> which she probably is. One immutable thing about Aiden Carney is that when he says he has a big crazy story, that turtle has one big MFing story. <laughs> True. So these are the two stories that he released yesterday, one of the two stories he released yesterday. 
uh, not Haley says, for the record, I reject the premise that I ever harassed or threatened Kim Fair. Well, what's that about? Kim Fair is uh, currently trying to get people fired from their jobs again. And she's a menace. Absolutely agree with you, not Haley. She is an absolute menace. Joey Bag of Donuts. I don't know what he's watching, but blah, 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 continued. Just another day in the most corrupt country, in the most corrupt state in the country. Sorry, the most corrupt county in the most corrupt state in the country. He's talking about Turtle Boys. Court hearing being continued. I mean, people were disappointed that they didn't get the big bombshells, but I think the biggest one for the day is that Special Prosecutor Ken Mello is now a witness for the defence. So, you know... How big do you need it to be, guys? <laughs> well, that's pretty big news. He's no longer the special prosecutor. I think there are a number, um, geez, I think it's number three special pros prosecutor now for Turtle Boy's case. But anyway, special prosecutor number one, Ken Mello, is now going to be testifying on behalf of the defence in regards to the setup of. Uh, Total boy and, and, and the fake victim. So that'll be interesting. So the way I understand it is his team were given the phone records for the fake victim, but they were redacted. They didn't know that they were redacted. It's a bit like Jen's phone records, just shit was deleted. They didn't know that until Tully accidentally sent the full records. <laughs> And so they could compare what was deleted from the records that were provided to the defence. And so that's probably going to raise some concerns about withholding evidence from the defence. Uh, so we'll see where that goes. Uh, Mazza's talking about the stuff that's going on in New York City right now. And I think there's another post we can refer to. But he says if the feds can go after the mayor of New York City, then they can and will go after those responsible or involved in John O'Keefe's murder. Um, hope, I'm thinking that it's probably, you know, a bit, a bit of a positive thing happening there. With regard to the NYC thing, better a post these are strange times. Nobody is running America and nobody's running New York City. With respect to New York City, in the past week, mayor under indictment, deputies are out, others have been indicted, police chief is out, his replacement has had his home searched by the feds, FD New York officials are out, corporate council resigned, DOE chief is out, and other than that, all is well in the city. <laughs> And I wrote, well, as wild as, as it is, there may be hope for Massachusetts yet, because if NYC can go down in flames, then MA can too. Okay, so this post, this post is really interesting. Sean tells us, I wonder if Proctor et al. realise what the penalties for suborning perjury are. The FBI have been seen interviewing key witnesses that testified and or were slated to testify in the Reed trial. The FBI were last seen in Dighton, Massachusetts area. Dighton, guys. Dighton is interesting. Alyssa says, ooh, is that why the trolls have been even more insane and obsessive than normal lately? Well, I think it's probably a combination of um, Aiden's hearing <laughs> and the Fed stirring things up. They know something's coming down the pike. So, bring it on, I say. <laughs> okay, what else have we got? <clears throat> right, this is stuff I haven't read, so you're learning it Why with people me. tell me stuff, I don't know, but they tell me stuff. All right, let me back up for a second. The Karen Reed case. Karen Reed, of course, accused of backing up over a Boston police officer boyfriend, John O'Keefe, leaving him in the snow to die. Now, that case is something we covered extensively on this channel, me and my team. Yes. I don't know why I'm talking it. like this. But I put this on my story recently. I can't speak. I have a Karen Reed case scoop, some scoopage, that I'm currently vetting out. Next you hear from me is either the scoop or it's being scooped by someone else. I don't like being scooped by other people. Now brace yourself. 
here is what my sources are telling me is going on inside the Norfolk County District Attorney's Office right here. His name is Hank Brennan. Stellar reputation. He represented Whitey Bulger. You've seen this now. We talked about this now. Adam Lally benched. We talked about that last week. Adam Lally, by the way, borderline getting his dick kicked in inside that office. I'm hearing Michael Morrissey is <laughs> basically blaming this entire thing on him. He was dealt a bad hand. We could all hate his style. We could hate on him all we want. The guy had a horrible case. Never, ever. This was overcharged from day one. The guy got screwed. Either way, Hank Brennan shows up. Here's what I'm hearing. You guys ready? Yeah, well, you know, as far as Lally goes, nobody's going to miss him, Dave. <laughs> teased you for a little bit today you saw tara reed's defense team file that whatever the hell you call it to the supreme judicial court well guess what it may not matter because what i'm hearing from my sources is that this man hanky b is going to drop them anyway he is solidly focusing on the manslaughter charge that's what my sources are telling me within that office and guess what my sources are good they're clean they know how much i hate the norfolk county district attorney's office and guess what i'm not saying they do but they're very close to that office. Is that fair? And I trust them. My sources are impeccable. And if I'm wrong, guess what? I don't really care anyway, to be completely honest with you, because it doesn't really matter that much to me. I'm not, I'm not really, like, covering this case outside of TikTok. I'm not reporting. I'm not writing about it in the Boston Globe. Right. It's just TikTok. So if you're wrong, you're wrong. But it is Dave Cullinane. So <laughs> if you're not familiar with who he is, he's a reporter from the area. And he's also... Um, nurse Kim's offsider or co-host I should say um, so you know he is pretty close to the action so we can take that one how you want to but mm, sounds promising right <laughs> Tony said I would like to stand in for half retarded bartender who lives in the yellow stained attic for a second you're a poo head and all your sources and predictions are wrong. <laughs> For those who don't know, that's that's the Yellow Cottage Tales guy that everyone's always taken the piss out of. So, um, so Bobby Peters was always uh, posting articles from the Boston. Oh, it's a Howie Carr story. Oh yeah, so <laughs> Massachusetts has gone full Canton. State Police Sergeant Yuri Buchanek lost five days vacation over an underlings text in the Karen Reed case. So there you go. You know what Howie Carr's going to say because it's everything Turtle Boy told him. <laughs> How do I get a GoFundMe out of this? <laughs> That's what she's looking up. GoFundMe for, stu for idiots. <laughs> <laughs> of course you you got that one which is pretty funny <laughs> I'm going to skip that. Delete, delete. Okay, so that so there you go. We've covered all the news. You've got all the most important details and funny things of Vex. <laughs> so over and out. <laughs>